Good morning, everyone. How's everyone doing today? Hope everyone is having a good day so far. So today, this is actually a picture, uh, you can see it, of a uh, Quote of the article, it says it's a private home and you can't even get in there, but it, uh, it's symbolic. It's uh, if you can't quite read the writing, it says House Simon the Tanner uh, on it. And so this is uh, the one picture I have that uh, uh, I don't know if he claims that it's his original home or not, uh, as they didn't really say. Uh, but I get it uh, feeling that it might be just uh, something more modern. It doesn't look like it's a structure from about uh, 70 AD. Oh, it's about uh, 57, about 60 AD. So we'll start with a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this time. Uh, we get to spend in your word and that, uh, look forward to uh, seeing what you have. Uh, you can help me to uh, relay anything that uh, uh, is uh, important that you want me to say to the folks. And I hope that uh, all that uh, here will uh, have a blessed day. In Jesus' precious name I pray. Amen. So today, uh, we left off that uh, Peter had been uh, staying with a man by the name of Simon the Tanner. And that, uh, I'll just bring those pictures back in real quick, because there was one other one that uh, showed that same scene from uh, a different angle. This is from, uh, I guess, up the street a little bit. Or maybe it is, who knows. Maybe it's that old, maybe it's from that time frame, I should say. But today, basically going to concentrate, I'm going to do today, even though it's uh, all one story, and basically about uh, two sessions, because it's pretty long. Uh, the first part of it is that uh, we, we meet this man by the name of Cornelius. Uh, he's up in Caesarea, and he has a vision to, uh, I guess uh, he's, a, he's a devout Christian. Uh, he's actually uh, a centurion. And just as a note, uh, a centurion is usually a, like a, it's like an officer uh, that we might see in today's uh, army. And he'd be in charge of a, uh, a company size, uh, which would be about a hundred men. And uh, that's what that word, uh, uh, and you'll see here that he's from the Italian band, and uh, that's not a musical group. Uh, that's a uh, band, and uh, this time frame in the Roman army uh, was a uh, was a portion of a uh, legion. A legion was around somewhere uh, six, uh, anyway, from two to six thousand men. A band would be one tenth of that, so it'd be like around. Uh, uh, one one definition I read said 400 to about 600 men. So this Cornelius is from the Italian band, and he himself is a leader of about, because he's a centurion, of about 100 men. And we'll start reading here in Acts 10, uh, 1, that was 1 and uh, verse 2. A devout man and one that feared God with all his house, which gave much alms to the people and prayed to God always. Good to see. You know, we don't really think about it, but uh, the influences of Jesus uh, extended even to the uh, Romans. Uh, I'm sure that uh, we will probably meet some uh, some Roman soldiers uh, that were stationed in that area, maybe it, uh, that uh, became Christians. Uh, and this is one of them. We'll get to meet him someday. Verse 3, he saw in a vision, evidently about the ninth hour of the day, an angel of God coming in to him and saying unto him, Cornelius. And when he looked on him, he was afraid and said, What is it, Lord? And he said unto him, The prayers of nine alms have come up from a memorial before God. 
So God has taken notice of him. That uh, he's a righteous man. That uh, he's been uh, helping the church out with some uh, tithing, and that uh, <laughs> he's a devout uh, man. And now send men to. Uh, uh, continuing in verse five. And now send men to Joppa and call for one Simon, whose surname is Peter. He lodges with one Simon a tanner, whose house is by the seaside. He shall tell thee what thou ought to do. And when the angel which spake unto Cornelius was departed, he called two of his household servants, a devout soldier of them that waited on him continually. And when he had declared all these things unto them, he sent them to Joppa. And on the morrow, as they went on their journey and drew nigh unto the city, Peter went up upon the housetop to pray about the sixth hour. And I thought I'd just real quick bring in a map here, get an idea. Well, Cornelius is up here in Caesarea. Uh, and that's uh, up north, a little bit farther north. Remember that from uh, Paul's travels. Uh, he spent quite a bit of time in Caesarea. Caesarea was actually uh, built by Herod the Great, and it was considered the capital of the Roman uh, occupation. Uh, so it's not unusual that uh, the centurion would be stationed there. <coughs> they probably, uh... and so he's going to send him down to Joppa. You can see Joppa here on the coast, at, uh, and that's where Paul is at. And here we see that Peter went up upon the housetop to pray about the sixth hour. Again, that's about noon, uh, so it's probably his uh, noon prayers. I really get the impression, I, and I have to admit myself that uh, that I kind of uh, do the same thing by uh, praying pretty much in the morning, and then again at uh, noon. Uh, I kind of correlate it with my meals, but uh, I spend a little extra time and uh, think about things, and uh, so. Uh, I can kind of relate to uh, Peter. Maybe he's, uh, he's actually going to go on to say that he's kind of like waiting for lunch to be ready. Uh, but he went up on the housetop to pray. And he became very hungry and would have eaten. But while they made ready, he fell into a trance. And saw a heaven open and a certain vessel descending upon him, as it had been a great sheet knit at the four corners and let down to the earth. Wherein were all manner of four-footed beasts of the earth, and wild beasts and creepy things and fowls of the air. There came a voice to him, Rise, Peter, kill and eat. Notice how God, the Lord uh, decided to do this just when he was hungry. So... Uh, I think uh, kind of ironic. I'm sure that Peter was thinking, boy, yeah, I can't wait for lunch to be ready. <laughs> and But Peter said, not so, Lord, for I have never eaten anything that is common or unclean. And the voice spake unto him again in a second time, what God hath cleansed, that call not thou common. And I thought I would uh, leave this point in... Uh, and go to a couple other references that I found on this same subject. And they're from Paul. And in Romans 14, 14 through 19, I'm going to read here next. We'll see where Paul kind of uh, reiterates the same thing. And I, and, I, and I get the gist of the story uh, as we'll, we'll see as we continue. But here in uh, Romans 14, 14, Paul now writing, I know and am persuaded by the Lord Jesus that there is nothing unclean of itself, but to him that esteemeth anything to be unclean, to him it is unclean. But if thy brother be grieved with thy meat, now walkest thou not charitably, destroy not him with thy meat for whom Christ died. And particularly take note of that. Uh, in other words, uh, we shouldn't uh, condemn another person for what their diet might be, or uh, I guess I, I guess I, so I get the impression from that, is that, uh, and I take this all the way to other things. Uh, I know that uh, Jews are very devout in how they prepare their food and things, but uh, I think the point they're trying to make here is that uh, 
don't use that as a stumbling block uh, between uh, brothers of the same uh, faith. If you believe in the Lord, don't don't uh, pick up these uh, these things that try to uh, destroy a brother. Verse 16 of Romans there. Let not then your good be evil spoken of. For the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. But he that is these saints serves Christ is acceptable to God and approved of men. Let us therefore follow after the things which make for peace and things wherewith one may edify another. So in other words, don't concentrate on the, on the, the small details, but... Uh, be loving in Christ and uh, some of the things that don't really are super important. Let's not uh, dwell on those. Also in uh, First Timothy, uh, he also wrote in four, four, for every creature of God is good and nothing to be refused if it be received with thanksgiving. Also in Titus 1.15, another reflection by Paul. Under the pure all things are pure, but under them that are defiled and unbelieving is nothing pure but even their mind and conscience is defiled. <clears throat> so I see that as a correlation uh, of this story. And as we continue on, you're gonna see the same thing that, uh, that the Lord is speaking to Peter here on the housetop that, uh, and we know why, because uh, Cornelius's troops are heading that way. And uh, being a Roman, he's a Gentile. And I think that the Lord is really trying to get him to reflect on this idea that uh, if God says they're unclean, if they're clean, then they're clean. So back to Acts 10, uh, we're in verse 16. This was done thrice, and the vessel was received up again into heaven. In other words, uh, that sheet came down three times and went back up three times. <clears throat> now, while Peter doubted in himself what this vision which he had seen meant, Behold, the men which were sent from Cornelius had made inquiry by Simon's house and stood before the gate. I got another reflection here. Uh, and over here, and uh, I'm going to jump forward to Acts uh, 11 here for a moment and just read a couple of verses. Of, uh, of what's going to happen at this point. So in Acts 11, 1, we see, And the apostles and brethren that were in Judea heard that the Gentiles had also received the word of God. And when Peter was come up to Jerusalem, they that were of the circumcision contended with him. Saying, Thou wentest in into men uncircumcised and dis eat with them. Here the uh, Jews in, uh, are accusing, as we'll see tomorrow, uh, that uh, Peter is going to understand why he had that vision. And I bring this up because uh, I'll just finish verse 4 here. But Peter rehearsed the matter from the beginning and expanded it by order unto them, saying, So I guess I had mentioned those four verses. And also over in Ephesians 3, 4, says, Whereby when ye read, ye may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ, which in other ages was not unto known unto the sons of men, as it is now revealed unto his holy apostles and the prophets by the Spirit. That the Gentiles should be fellow heirs and of the same body and partakers of the promise in Christ by the gospel. I just threw those in there, uh, mainly to, but I see the point of this vision, uh, to kind of prove the uh, point of the vision, and Peter is going to see it also. And we'll see more of that tomorrow when he actually uh, uh, meets with Cornelius. But I want to uh, inject that as today's lesson, as that uh, uh, God has uh, is not only showing Peter here in this vision, but he also showed Paul, as I mentioned uh in Ephesians, that uh, uh, the Gentiles are fully, uh, fully accepted uh, into the body of Christ. So back to Acts 10:18 in the story we're reading today. 
so we're back at the uh, the house there and and those three men had arrived at the door and they said and called and asked whether Simon which was surnamed Peter was lodged there so he's asking the folks at the door uh, those three verse 19 and while Peter thought on the vision the spirit said unto him behold three men seek thee Arise therefore and go thee down and go with them, doubting nothing, for I have sent them. Then Peter went down to the man which was sent unto him from Cornelius and said, Behold, I am he whom ye seek. What is the cause wherefore ye are come? And they said, Cornelius, a centurion, a just man and one that feareth God, and of good report among all the nations of the Jews, was warned from God by a holy angel to send for thee and do his house and to hear words of thee. And then called he them in, in and lodged them. And on the morrow, Peter went away with them and certain brethren from Joppa accompanied him. So I'm going to leave there. At uh, Basically, they spent the night and at... Uh, uh, I have just a couple more verses here uh, to kind of show the kind of uh, for this verse here. You notice that uh, they called him, he them in and lodged them. In other words, Peter put them up for the night rather than having them uh, stay out in the cold. So uh, we reflect back over in Hebrews three two that uh, uh, something that uh, I always think about too is that uh, be not forgetful to entertain strangers. For thereby some have entertained angels unaware. I actually had an experience once that I thought that uh, I might have met an angel. Uh, I'll tell you that story. I probably already have at least once. <laughs> then over in First Peter, we also see uh, in First Peter four nine, use hospitality one to another without grudging. Uh, so I just threw those verses in there to reflect back on uh, that Acts. Uh, 1023 but here it is tomorrow and they're going to be heading up to Caesarea and we'll pick up the story tomorrow uh, I thought it would just uh, reflect I may show these again tomorrow anyways uh, but you may remember these pictures from uh, Paul's time frame here's some pictures of uh, Caesarea pretty big city uh herod uh, built this and it's quite a these are these are this is what it would have looked like in herod's time and uh still a lot of ruins there today uh this is what it looks like now uh but a huge uh tourist area if you ever get a chance it's uh to get to israel and that's another picture of uh that's uh amphitheater there on the coast so that's where they're heading so for today's prophecy moment today we're going to look at that uh, it was foretold that uh, where Jesus was going to be born and this came in uh, into effect as we remember from uh, Sunday night uh, that uh, this is Micah 5 2 and I think that they uh, the, they probably recited this during the, uh, the little uh, get together there uh, Sunday night that was awesome by the way really enjoyed it be thou Bethlehem Ephatera Though thou be a little among the thousands of Judea, yet out of thee shall he come forth unto me, that is, to be ruler in Israel, whose goings forth have been form of old from everlasting. So again, it points out, this is a Micah. It's like about 300 years. This stop. The 
the video stop. I got the impression the video stop. I guess it's still going. Hey Kevin. Good morning. Anyways, back to But thou Bethlehem Ephetera, though thou be little among the thousands of Judea, yet out of thee shall he come forth unto me, that is to be ruler in Jerusalem, whose goings forth have been from of old, from everlasting. And of course, uh, we shoot forward to Matthew 2 1, and this is where we uh, read about the, uh, the place. Uh, today is more the place of Christ's birth, foretold a few hundred years before uh, Jesus was uh, set to come. So in Matthew 2 1, we read Now, when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, Behold, there came wise men from the east to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he that is born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east, and are come to worship him. A lot of this verse, uh, mainly because of, uh, well, I talk about that uh, that uh, event last night, but uh, I, I have a feeling that the actual star that uh, was here was a lot different, because it actually moved and showed them where it was at. But it was kind of cool that that, uh, that event last night was uh, hadn't happened for like 800 years. And over in Luke 2, 4, we see the same thing. Famous verse. And Joseph also went up from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth into Judea, unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was, house, was of the house and lineage of David. To be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife, being great with child. And so it was that while they were the days there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. Great story. And, uh, you know, of course, we celebrate it this week. As many believe that uh, it really probably happened in September, but... Uh, not a big deal. I think you can celebrate it every day of the year if you want to. Uh, that's my thought on that. So that's all for today. And we'll continue with the story uh, with Peter and uh, Caesarea tomorrow. Then with a prayer, uh, dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this time uh, in your word. And uh, and thank you for the, uh, the promises you kept. Uh, just amazing to read. Uh, your word and see all the promises you gave lord uh, that, uh, that being fulfilled even even today as we see uh israel back in the land uh a prophecy that uh, was foretold uh, back in daniel and that uh, looking forward to your return at some point and uh, more of your prophecies to be fulfilled in jesus precious name i pray amen you guys have a great day we'll see you tomorrow